Hey everybody, welcome back to Gideon Stuff. Today I'm pretty excited because we've got a review of a really cool knife. This is the Civivi Vision FG. What a cool knife. What a cool knife. I'm sure you guys have already seen lots of videos about this knife. I've heard lots about it, but I hope you're still excited to hear my takes on it. So, let's go ahead and get this started. Let's take a blade length measurement, sharpened edge, we're coming in just a hair under three, well, pretty much exactly three and a quarter inches, we'll call it. Um, if we go all the way back to the scales, uh, let's go close part on the scales, about three and a half inches of blade. So definitely a full size knife. This is in the, uh, the size range that I typically prefer to carry. Let's get our size comparisons out here. There is the rat one. Here's the two. So yeah, it's a full size knife, but it's not huge. Right, sometimes I forget how big the rat one is. It's it's a big boy. It's a pretty big one. All right, um, let's go ahead and bring out our USA Made comparisons. Here is the Benchmade bug out, and uh, there's the PM2. <laughs> Lost it for a sec. And there's our PM2. Pretty comparable in size to the PM2, honestly. Um, let's bring out our Civivi comparisons, which are going to be especially pertinent today. Here is the Praxis and the Elementum. Cool, cool, cool. And uh, I guess we'll call it there on comparisons. I was going to compare this against like a, a Dimco 80 20.5 because the locks are kind of similar, but I don't have one around right now. So we're going to leave it at that. I think you guys got a pretty good idea about how big this knife is. Materials. Nitro V sheep's foot blade, micarta scales. You can also get it in G10, and then it's got the super lock. We do have a steel pocket clip and steel liners. Let's go ahead and talk about this thing. There are two types of people in this world. Those who can scramble in cowboy boots and those who cannot. <laughs> this is why uh, my ankles are terrible. Isn't that just absolutely gorgeous? I mean, I really don't have anything else to say. I mean, in the pocket today, <laughs> Civivi Vision FG. I guess I'll throw this footage in the review for this. Um, cool knife. But man, isn't that just stunning? I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna have to come back um, and get down in there more when I've got other shoes on. I mean, I've got my hiking boots in my truck, but I didn't put them on because it's about 7.30 and uh, I've got other places to be, but I'm coming back. I am coming back. <laughs> and bonus perk fossils. This is a Permian or Pennsylvanian. I'm not actually sure how old this stuff is. But this is a limestone. And I think this is a big old crinoid. You can see kind of that shape there. We've got the big circle thing, circle thing there. If so, this is the biggest crinoid I've ever found. In fact, the more I look at it, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's a crinoid. It's a big old chunk of a crinoid, I'll tell you what. Well, there's tons and tons of little fossils. Nothing as good as that first crinoid. Got a little uh, brachiopod right in there, but it's not worth keeping. It's only I like about that crinoid. Let's dig it out of my pocket. I love the calcite crystallization in there. Very sparkly, very cool. It's actually one of my favorite recent finds. Hmm. 
look like something. Oh, I'm about to fall off this mountain. I think it's just a chert nodule. Pretty sure it is. Oh, what's that? Ah. Huh. have to look at this a little bit closer and figure out what those little patterns are. There's a cool little fossil, but uh, <laughs> yeah, not worth this whole chunk of rock, so oh, there's a big old bracky pod right in there. Yeah, there's some, some okay stuff in here. When I first got this VV Vision FG in hand, one of the first things that occurred to me was, this would probably be a fairly decent food prep folding knife. The edge does sit a little bit kind of in line, if not a little bit below your, your knuckles. The blade actually kind of reminds me of a Santuku. Um, you know, we've got a nice little point here. We kind of sweep upwards a little bit. It just felt like something that'd be very, very good for food preppy tasks. So today, we're going to be using it for some food prep doing a little bit of testing uh, with it. And honestly, I've been using it for food prep stuff for a while. Um, so yeah, but we want to get some footage and you know what? I'll give you guys a fun little recipe to make. We're going to be making leche de tuna, uh, which is an amazingly refreshing drink and uh, should be fun. And I've got time to kill right now on this beautiful Sunday because I've been trying to edit uh, my review of the Demco Free Rain for the past three days. And um, I've been having troubles getting the file exported because it's a freaking huge file. That video is over an hour long. I might have to cut a lot out, but I don't want to because I think it's a good video. But anyways, today we're working with this knife. So let's go ahead and get started. Obviously the most important ingredient that we're gonna be using today is our tuna or cactus fruit. I like to harvest these fresh just because I can here in the Chihuahuan Desert, um, but you know, you can either go and pick them yourself if you live in the Southwest, or um, they're pretty common in grocery stores in the Southwest. I'm not sure about anywhere else, um, but in order to prepare these, obviously they've got all these little spines on them. I found that it works nicely to uh, get them cool, like, you know, put them all in like a, an ice bath. Let them sit in there for a little bit. And if you pull them out and you kind of like rub them around or scrape them with the back of your knife, the spines come off a little bit easier. This one's still got a couple of spines on here. These are the last um, few fruits uh, from my last uh, little harvesting expedition. Some of them have been kind of bounced around in the fridge a little bit. And some of these spines are still on here, but it should be fine. So in order to prepare these for our drink, what we're gonna wanna do is cut off both ends this behind the camera. <laughs> I should figure out a better camera angle to do this with. You can see on that side we got like that little woody core. And then to get the skin off, we're just going to make a little slit. And then you start peeling. Right like And obviously I'm not going to have you guys sit here and watch me do all of these, so time for a magical video editing cut. Alright, now that's done and our everything is stained purple, which by the way, isn't that just a beautiful shade of purple? Um, yeah, this, this knife did just fine. A um, little bit dirty and sticky. We'll give that a quick rinse here in a second. I do want to point out too, I realize that this video is going to be coming out in like November. Um, I'm currently doing this in, in September. I picked these back in late August. Um, yeah, so it's going to be out of season for a lot of these. Um, I've got a couple here that weren't quite the same level of ripeness when I picked these. I actually decided to do one here so you can see this one's more green than these purple ones. Here's one, that, a nice big one that's that's not quite mature yet. For making um, the drink like a leche de tuna, you want the really, really dark, very sweet ones. These ones also are very bruised because these are the last remainders from the bunch. They've been sitting in the fridge. Um, but actually that does help bring out the sweetness a little bit. 
Um, yeah, so there's other things that we can do with these ones, and we'll do those um, later. But yeah, make sure you get the really, really dark red ones. All right, let's rinse off this knife, and let's move on to the next steps. Now, obviously, it's a good idea to, you know, keep your knife <laughs> from getting sticky. And a folding knife is never going to be the best um, thing for a kitchen. But this knife does kind of work. I know the original had a feature where you could pull the lock out for easy cleaning. This thing has a little hole there. We didn't really get anything down in the, down the action today, but I guess I can use that to kind of clean things out a little bit if I really wanted to. But I'm not sure if we're going to do that today. In fact, I don't think so. All right, our next step is to add our fruits to a blender. You'll notice that we have not taken the seeds out. This is the step where we're going to get the hard little seeds out of the tuna. Go ahead and add two cups of cold water. And then start blending, which I'm not gonna film because um, I know that that is going to absolutely wreck the audio. When we're done blending, we should have this beautiful beautiful pinkish purple juice. This is absolutely amazing, but this is chock full of seeds. So now I need to strain it. Isn't that beautiful? Get in here, get in here. Look at this beautiful foamy, Gorgeous. And there's all of our seeds in there. And of course there's gonna be some here too. juice out as possible. Grab something to stir. So there we go. We've got some pure prickly pear juice. Now, if we were making agua de tuna, which is one of my favorite drinks as well, and I did make some a little while ago, we would just add a few more cups of cold water to this and some sugar and we'd be done. Amazing drink, very refreshing. It's a great summertime juice. Um, I like to add one cup of water per um, prickly pear that I put in and then with the sugar, Basically just add till it gets as sweet as you want it. But since we're making agua or leche de agua, we've got to use some sweetened condensed milk. So let's go ahead and get that going. For some reason, sweet and condensed milk is simultaneously absolutely amazingly delicious and lovely, but also kind of sickening to me. I, I don't know why. Um, yeah, but as a raw ingredient, it just kind of weirds me out. Yeah. All right. So at this point, you could just dump the sweet and condensed milk into your juice and then stir it in. I like to put it all back in the blender and froth it, get it all nice and creamy, and um, you'll see. We'll see. 
after you get your uh, sweet and condensed milk in there, or at least as much as you can, yes, use the entire can, we're going to add in some ice cubes. And then, we're going to blend all this together. Oh yeah, look how foamy that is. Oh, isn't that just, doesn't that just look delicious? Doesn't that look absolutely divine? The correct answer is yes. Yeah, that pink, foamy... Oh, it's just... The elixir of the gods. Ah, doesn't that just look absolutely delightful? Yes. Yes, it does. Last step, just add some ice cubes. Now, this is a much sweeter um, drink than, like, you know, a regular agua fria or something. Uh, and if you don't want it to be so sweet and condensed, you can add, you know, a little more water, lighten it up for you a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and test it right now like this and see what I think. Oh, that is the perfect, perfect drink for hot weather. Again, I like it thick, almost, it's almost a milkshake, but not quite. Um, if you want to make yours a little thinner, add a little bit more water. But this here, perfection. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, now I can face the 112 degree weather outside. So, since this is a knife video, what do I think about the uh, the, the overall blade shape of the Vision FG? Um, yeah, I do think this knife is, you know, uh, a very cool kind of food preppy folder. It does remind me a lot of a Santuku. Again, though, it is a folding knife. Are folding knives ever, the ideal tool for food prep? No, probably not. Uh, obviously, get yourself a you know a nice fixed blade. But for us knife weirdos, um, it does work. And you know, if you've got nothing else with you, um, yeah, this definitely does work fine. You can get down to that edge on a cutting board pretty easily. Of course, I wasn't doing like you know I wasn't dicing a whole lot of things or anything like that today. But hey. It's a very useful blade shape, multi-purpose, EDC and food prep. Very cool. Alrighty guys, you ready to do some review cutting with the Civivi Vision FG? I sure hope you are. Before we get into that, I, I have to have to give a call out to our cutting location today. This is Kilburn Hole. I'm gonna get the heck out of the way, let you just appreciate that. This is one of the coolest places on the planet in terms of geology. Kilburn Hole is a volcanic mar crater. And a mar, spelled M-A-A-R, uh, happens when you have a magma body that's sitting under the surface and groundwater intrudes it. And when these two things meet, there's a huge eruption. You know, lots of steam, gas is being released. Basically, it goes boom in a big way. And it leaves behind a crater like this big old hole and uh, sometimes these fill up with water become crater lakes things like that obviously this one has not but there is you know a nice little playa type environment down in there you know there is a little bit more water but not a whole lot what makes Kilburn Hole really really cool though 
is that it's not just a mar that went boom. That's cool enough. But what's even cooler is that when it went boom, it brought pieces of the mantle to the surface. So just for some context, the mantle is a long ways down, right? And it's hard to study. But coming here, you can pick pieces of the mantle off the ground, pieces of the mantle rock called peridotite. And what's really, really cool about this is that stuff's very rare on the surface, right? It's hard to get to. Um, it's hard to bring up to the surface. And once it gets to the surface, it wears away very quickly. It's not stable on the surface. Peridotite, uh, comatiites, you know, any, these different um, rocks that are mantle based, uh, they're only stable in the mantle. So when you have them on the surface, they, they deteriorate, they degrade rapidly. Kilburn Hole is only about 25,000 to 80,000 years old. So fairly young, geologically speaking, which means the xenoliths it brought to the surface. Xenoliths are just rocks that are kind of out of place. They're uh, in a rock that um, they're not original to. Uh, they're sitting here and they're still in good shape. They're in good enough shape for scientists to study and learn a lot about the composition of the mantle. And that's absolutely amazing. These rocks are gorgeous. Um, yeah, just really, really cool stuff. Um, one of the reasons it was able to form is because of the Rio Grande Rift. I've talked about this a lot. You know, as it was, as the crust was undergoing extension, you know, things are spreading apart, the crust thins, right? And so right here in the Rio Grande Rift Valley, the crust is very, very thin, which means we have lots of volcanism. So yeah, just really, really cool stuff. I love, I, I love geology. But you know what else is really, really cool? The Civivi Vision FG. This thing is bad ass guys this thing's badass and this is that's the first time i've said that about a Civivi folder in a while so let's go ahead and talk about let's start with the action super lock that thumb stud action is addicting it's very solid the thumb studs are placed excellently reverse flicks also very nice um, you can flick it out with the lock heck that you can flick it out without the lock uh, the detent is not very strong, which makes the thumb stud feel a little bit weird because it feels like it has a strong detent when you use a thumb stud, even though basically it has no detent. Um, very, very cool. You can front flip this. Ow! <laughs> Sometimes uh, you got to be a little bit careful, but you can get it. Um, I don't know why you would do that, but you can. Um, and yeah. I got to where I was deploying this with every finger just because, you know, it's fun. Even the pointer finger from the front, which sometimes I got to get the right angle on. Yeah, very, very fun to do. But yeah, super fidgety. I mean, look at that. Look at that. There's there, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. So very, very good action. So about the ergonomics. They're solid, right? The handle is very neutral. I do feel the clip a little bit, but it's honestly not bad and kind of tucks into, see this little crease in my hand? Kind of tucks in there. You can choke up a little bit. Um, yeah, very good ergos. The ergos complement the blade very, very nicely. So I appreciate that a whole lot. All right, let's talk about the carry. So the pocket clip, ironically, this is Civivi's like one of their older clips with the squared off end. I like this clip a lot. So I was happy to see it here. Um, yeah, it works great in a pocket. Pocket clip placement is a little bit goofy, let's be honest. Uh, would it have been better down here? I kind of think so. I'm not sure why they put it up here. But they did make it reversible. So, hey, this is a completely ambidextrous knife. And that is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Let's see it. Let's see her in the pocket. All the way in. Easy to get out. Easy put in. Easy get out. Easy put in. <laughs> if I don't fumble it. Yeah, just a very, very good functional pocket clip. The knife is a little bit weighty. It's got some weight to it. It's got a little bit of heft and it's, you know, got a little bit of girth too. But I mean, I'm someone who carries big knives regularly. It, it's, it doesn't bother me. I don't think it would bother you. If you carry only the bug out, you might notice a little bit more weight, but I mean, I think you'll be fine. Suck it up, right? All right, let's do some cutting, which I have to go and grab <laughs> some cardboard. So I will be right back. 
Alrighty, sorry about that. We're here with our uh, cardboard. I, I apologize, even though for you guys, it's an instantaneous cut. You, you don't even notice I've been gone. Um, I do want to say, though, I mean, gosh, it is absolutely gorgeous. Sun's getting ready to set in, well, a couple hours. <laughs> but uh, it's, what time is it? Let's see here. Sorry, finger. 6.30? Yeah, so sun's going to start setting here in about an hour and a half. Anyways, let's go ahead and do some cutting, shall we? That's what that's what we're here for. This video has probably had so many side quests and tangents and distractions, I, I do apologize. But my channel, my rules, right? <laughs> so we have a Nitro V sheep's foot blade. Um, I probably played the food prep video before this. Very interesting blade shape. Um, honestly, I really, really like it. I think it's a fantastic blade. Um, how do we want to do this? You know what? Let's go ahead and do like this. Great for utility cuts. Let's get that tape cut. It is a flat grind. Might be losing that edge a little bit. I have been using this a lot, but not enough for it to be losing its edge like that. Guys, am I just having the shittiest luck with Nitro V? I gotta say, I cannot like Nitro V. So I'm recording this on September, oh heck, what is the date? The 16th. I'm recording the review cutting on September the 16th. Don't know when the review is gonna be filmed. That could be filmed. I actually, it's not going to be filmed for a while. I'm not ready to review this knife yet. So review cutting will probably be filmed end of this month or early October, the full review. Um, I've had this knife since August, um, since the last of August. So, you know, I've had it for like two weeks. Um, I haven't been using it all that hard, right? I'm at school, I'm not on the ranch anymore, so my use is not as tough as it normally is. Normally, you know, two weeks of use with a knife would definitely dull it. But um, maybe the food cutting just took the snot out of it. I, I don't know, I just... I don't know, we'll see how it does for the rest of this. Fantastic utility cutter. Get off of there, tape. And it is a great slicer. And yeah, it's not... It's not dull, it is still sharp, it's just not as bitey as it should be. Okay, so, let's do our uh, rope. See? Mm. All right, so there's our rope cut. One, two, three, um, not, not great, but also, you know, getting clearance on this table is a little bit, although not that tough. I don't know. Might be the sharpness issue. I mean, it feels sharp, but it's not biting. I don't know. All right, let's do the pool noodle. See what we got here. See how it like, see, okay. This is how I, I can tell when a knife has lost its, its edge. When I push into the pool noodle, it like indents the noodle before it starts to bite in. Anyways, let's continue. There's one, two, three. Okay, yeah. Hmm. You're gonna have to put an edge on that guy, but the geometry itself is still very good. Look how thin we were able to go even with that sawing motion. So the geometry is really, really nice, even if it's losing its apex. Um, but yeah, there we go. Very nice blade shape. I do enjoy it quite a bit. Let's go ahead and get to the uh, rest of the review. <laughs> there we go. That, that That's what I meant to do. All righty. Let's talk about what I'm liking and not liking about the Civivi Vision FG. First of all, I just love that this knife exists. 
Um, Snack's designs are notoriously hard to get, right? He is a custom maker. I think I, I think I remember reading or hearing somewhere that he uh, his one of his customs sold for the most money a custom pocket knife has ever sold for. Something like that. I'll, maybe I'll fact check myself on that, but I think I remember hearing that somewhere. Um, definitely a sought after designer. He's done two knife designs with Wii that I know of, um, including the Wii Vision. Uh, but seeing this knife come to the budget tier is absolutely incredible. And I mean, it's not even a budget knife. It's like an $80 knife, so it's not exactly budget, but definitely an affordable version of a fantastic design. And I love that. I absolutely love that. Usually we save the price for the last, but we're going to talk about it right now because it is amazing to get a Snex design for under $100. And from all, everything I've heard, this is actually better than the Wii version. I've never handled the Wii version, but um, I would prefer this one just because it has thumb studs instead of the blade hole. I prefer that. I think I prefer the clip on this one too. But yeah, so that's that. That's a huge pro with this knife. It's a fantastic design. It's an improvement on a fantastic design, and it's cheaper than any other iteration of this design that you can get. So absolutely love that. Moving on, let's go ahead and get the action out of the way. Fantastic action. Reverse flick, thumb flick, uh, lock flick, <laughs> gravity flick, front flip. Let's see, reverse flick it with uh, that finger. Let's see if I can do the pinky thing today. Sometimes I can get this. Yeah, there we go. Pinky flick. Do the from the front. Index finger flick. Yeah, this thing is very, very fidgety. Very fun action. Look at that. And here are those tings. Yeah, very, very cool. But even with that, you know, super just frictionless action, when it's open, it locks up very, very solid. Um, the super lock is an incredibly strong lock. Um, is it the strongest? I don't think so. Um, but it's a very strong lock. Does that really matter on a knife like this? Not really, but, you know, it's fun to have. Um, the, as you saw, you know, I can flick this knife out, no problem. There, there's not really a detent. You know, it's kind of, it kind of feels like a, like a crossbar lock or, or, or shark lock or something like that where you don't really have a traditional detent. However, I think it's a placement of the thumb studs. When you hit those thumb studs, it feels like there's a detent. I mean, this thing just slams open. Feels very, very satisfying. Um, like that a whole lot. Easy to slow roll. Um, yeah, fantastic action. I love a, thumb, a good thumb stud action. This is one of the better ones I felt in a very, very long time. Next up, uh, the ergonomics are really good in my opinion. Um, you know, a little bit chunky, kind of squared and blocky, but they work. Is this the most comfortable knife in the world? No, absolutely not. But it works in the hand. You can choke up in here, get up right behind that edge. I really, really enjoy that. Speaking of the edge, let's talk about the blade. This is a really nice blade. I love this blade shape. You know, you've got kind of a straight edge, but it cants upward, so you can get really, really powerful slices. Your tip drops down, so you can get your utility cuts really easily. Flat grind, so it gets down to a thin edge, but it's a pretty stable edge. Very thin tip. Look at that tip. Yeah, that's a splinter picker for sure. Um, Nitro V steel we'll talk about <laughs> here in a little bit, but uh, yeah, this is a this is a fantastically functional blade. This can get basically anything done, right? I showed some footage with food prep. You know, if you grab the knife kind of in a pinch grip like this, you know, you can get some good rocking cuts. Um, just a just a very very useful blade, and it complements the handle very nicely. Um, next up, this knife does have a reversible pocket clip, so this is a completely ambidextrous knife. Love seeing that. The clip is also inset to the scales, and it has flat screws, which is something that Civivi doesn't always do, so I'm very happy to see them doing it here. Speaking of the clip, this is Civivi's old steel clip with the squared off um, edge there. You can see here's a, an older Civivi with that same clip. Um, nowadays, Civivi's steel clip looks like this. 
Um, but they also had for a while, I'm not sure if I've got an example laying around. I don't think I do. Um, but for a while they also had the, uh, um, basically this same clip except pointy. I'm glad they went with the square clip on this version. I'm glad they resurrected this clip because the clip placement is not ideal. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But if they'd had the pointy version of the clip here, I think it would have dug into my hand a lot worse. This version of the clip, since it's square and it's kind of the same width all the way around, it helps your hand to just kind of sit on it a little bit easier. Um, the other thing too is this clip does not go up as high or drastically as their uh, next iteration of the clip would. So it's a little more low profile. It helps it hide in the hand a little bit better. So that was definitely a good call on their part. Oh, that action is just crazy. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about the micarta. Good grippiness on micarta. There's a couple different options for this, including a, a G10 version. I think there's also a Damascus version with ivory G10. Um, so lots of different versions. You can pick your poison. Uh, I got the green micarta here. Green handles with a black blade is kind of becoming my go-to uh, style for a lot of things. Um, all of my field gear is is green like I, I buy green cargo or well, green outdoor pants my backpack is green i've got a couple green shirts green hats <laughs> green and black right um so i don't know I, i'm just attracted to that a little bit i like to kind of match all my gear not that it's super important but you know it's interesting to do um yeah and this is definitely a knife that i could ec i could use this a little bit harder very very cool knife Okay, so let's go ahead and get into, uh, oh, one thing I'm going to mention real quick before we get into that with the pros, typical Civivi build, right? Fit and finish was excellent out of the box, captured pivot. The hardware on this is actually pretty minimal. You know, we've only got this body screw here and here. I think there's also, I haven't taken this apart yet, but I think there's also probably some screws around here somewhere. I'm not sure. Um... Yeah, very minimal T8 hardware. I, uh, I like that a whole lot. All right, let's go ahead and get to some of the negatives. Um, one thing, I think this knife is going to be a little bit heavier than some people like. I don't mind it. This is not negative for me, but it definitely is kind of heavy. The balance point is right there. I can get this to balance. Yeah, so the balance point's right there. That's kind of far back. Um, I'd appreciate it if it was forward a little bit. I think they tried to, you know, help with that a little bit by milling out these holes. Um, but yeah, it is a little bit heavy. Might not be some people's cup of tea. It's also a little bit thick. Let's bring out the PM2. Yeah, just a little bit thicker than the PM2. Uh, so, you know, for carry, some people might not like that. Again, it doesn't really bother me that much. Uh, and it does fold up into a slim enough package that I think it's absolutely fine. Um... Let's talk about the clip. I don't know why they put the clip here. I think it would have been better to just have the clip down here, but it, it's not terrible here. I was expecting to hate it in the hand. It doesn't bother me that much in the hand. I can definitely feel it. I think the clip would have been better down here, but it's not. I, I was really expecting to complain a lot more about that. Um, and I'm very happy that I don't have to complain about that. So that, that you know, that's awesome. Um, next thing I'm going to point out, that I'm not sure if this is co a complaint or not because I don't have the original to, to compare to, but the original, you know, you could take out the lock to clean things easier. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm making up my mind right now. This is not a complaint. I'm glad this knife doesn't do that. Add that to the pros. That's an improvement. <laughs> they do give you this little hole that you can get in there and clean things up, I, I, I guess. I don't know why, you know, maybe just take the whole thing apart if you have to do that. Um, I do wish there was some jimping on here. But I wish that with every knife that doesn't have jimping. Um, I, I, I really love jimping. Um, and besides that, my only other complaint is the Nitro V Steel. Guys, I don't know why I have such terrible luck with Nitro V. For a long time, I was very anti-Nitro V. I found that it would just rust on me and that it wouldn't hold a great edge. Then I decided that I was going to do a, you know, full test of Nitro V. I got the Civivi Conspirator, made a whole video about it. And I was like, you know what? It's an okay steel. I'm, I'm fine with it. This knife, though, just kind of reminded me that I don't like Nitro V that much. I'm going to sharpen. I haven't sharpened this knife up. 
Um, since I did the review cutting, I've stropped it, I hit it on a ceramic rod. So, I mean, it's got an edge right now. But it's kind of a, kind of a rough edge. Uh, I don't know. Um, it just hasn't been performing the way I'd want it to. Again, I'm not really using this knife all that hard. You know, I'm not on the ranch right now. Basically, this knife gets used for opening packages, and I did some food prep with it. I did the review cutting. I've broken down a couple boxes. It shouldn't be this. It shouldn't be losing its bite like it has been. To Nitro V's credit, you know, when I started noticing that it was getting a little bit rough, hit it on some ceramic rods and a strop, and it came back, but it just... I don't know. I'm going to reprofile it, sharpen it up really good, see if I can get some more performance out of that. I think I'm going to leave it with a somewhat coarse edge, or at least not a high mirror polish edge. I don't know. I, I feel like I just have the crappiest luck with Nitro V. So many people love it, and I just, I can't love Nitro V. I, I can't love it. So, you know, that, that that is a shame. But other than that, that's really it. Let's go ahead and get to my final conclusions. Guys, I love this knife. And that's the first time I said that about a Civivi pocket knife in a while. Um, this is cool. This is different. This is unique. It definitely justifies its existence in the hobby right now. It's a fun knife. It's a functional knife. Um, I made a video that um, actually is probably going to be coming out tomorrow from the time you're seeing this, talking about knives that I could carry for the rest of my life. And this this made it on that list. I definitely could. If this was my only EDC knife, I think I'd be fine. This is a great design. It's a well-made knife. Um, the $80 price tag, I think, is absolutely worth it. Uh, this is <laughs> this is one of the only Civivis where, in recent times, where I've said, oh, yeah, the price is 100% justified. Um, but, yeah, it, it's justified here. Uh, I really, really like it. It's... A cool knife. So, if you've been on the fence about this, go ahead and pick it up. I don't think a whole lot of people have been on the fence. I know my review uh, is probably going to be a little bit, in fact, I know it's going to be pretty late. It's probably going to come out late October, early November. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, yeah, it's almost the end of September right now when I'm filming this. Um, yeah, it's a great knife. I, I I absolutely give it my seal of approval. So if that means anything to you, go ahead and pick this knife up. And that's going to be it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave it a like, comment below, and subscribe. I've been Gideon, and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.